So after watching the black phone, I got in my car, turned on Apple Music, hit shuffle, and Black Balloon by the Goo Goo Dolls played, and I got a little scared. Yeah. What's going on everyone, James here with another real review and today we're diving into my spoiler free thoughts on the black phone. A huge thank you to Universal Pictures for giving me the chance to see this early in theaters, but you can also check it out when it drops this weekend. Guys, I'm so curious to hear what you think of this film. I've been excited for this because Scott Derrickson, who directs this movie, is one of my favorite horror directors to date. The guy is so darn good. He of course did Sinister and directed one of my favorite MCU movies, Doctor Strange. The film stars Ethan Hawke. Mason Thames, Madeline McGraw, and Jeremy Davies. But before we get into my thoughts on the film, before we dive into what this is about, and also, well, what I didn't like too much about the movie, if it is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James, where I love talking about films just like this. So if you don't want to miss out on any more reviews, reactions, and all the news in between, go ahead and hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, tap on the bell, and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy content like this. And hey, get loud in the comments too. And let me know, guys. Did you also get scared at that one scene in the first half of the film? Yeah, I, I probably jumped. I feel bad for the person in front of me. I didn't mean to kick them. Sorry. Alrighty, so if you don't know much about the black phone, trust me, the less you know, the better. But I can give you a little bit of context here. The movie is about Finney Shaw, a shy but clever 13-year-old boy who's abducted by a sadistic killer and trapped in a soundproof basement where screaming is of little use. And that's about it. Seriously. I am actually not going to dive into it any much more than that because I don't want y'all to get spoiled. So let's get right into the positives. And guys, we got to start with the awesome performances in this movie. The kids in this film absolutely crush it. And the pack is led by Mason Thames, who plays Finney Shaw. His acting to me was incredibly nuanced, and I totally believed him from start to finish. And it's funny because he, to me, is one of the more relatable characters. Unfortunately, he gets bullied at school. He's trying to find the courage to stick up for not only himself, but for his sister and his friends. And it is a little bit of a nice character arc that they give to this character. So his development over the course of the film is probably the strongest. And there is a certain scene that tugged at my heartstrings. But man, Mason Thames just brings it. And he honestly is never letting go. And there's a lot of just incredibly emotional scenes that are only aided by his acting. And then you have Madeline McGraw who plays Gwen. This is Finney's sister. And to me, other than Ethan Hawke, she probably did give one of the better performances in the movie. And you know what? I guess I might as well just say it. She did give the best performance in the film. I know Ethan Hawke is here. He's great. But Madeline McGraw stole scenes. She was the one to make the audience laugh, make them almost cry, make them feel conflicted about whatever she was doing. And I loved what they did with her character, the way they wrote her character. It was just so effective. She has a lot of range as well. There are some incredible scenes with her brother, her father, and her classmates. And yeah, even the police. There's this scene in a kitchen. That's all I'm gonna say. And I will tell you that she sold me on that alone. I mean, I cannot wait to see her future in Hollywood because it is so bright. But of course, there is the legend himself, Ethan Hawke, who plays the Grabber. This is the guy that wears the mask, has the black balloons, and abducts these kids, which is terrible. But what's not terrible is his performance here. It's sinister, chilling, and guys, he is just incredibly versatile. He's one of my favorite actors in Hollywood, and that's because he can do everything from Moon Knight to First Reformed all the way to the Black Phone. This dude is just bouncing all over the place, but in a great way. And his performance from the first time he was shown on screen made me so uncomfortable, but I guess that's the point, right? Also, a huge shout out to Miguel Cazarez Mora, who plays Robin. He was actually a crowd favorite, but for me personally, this kid... Oh well, he dished the medicine back to the bullies that they were dishing out to their victims, so I loved the intensity from this character. But also, there's one very significant moment between Robin and Finney in this movie that to me might have been my favorite moment of the entire film because it really encompasses what this movie is about. So yes, his performance was incredible, those performances were the standouts, but it's not just about the acting here, I also think the story is really unique. And it really is one of the most unique horror movies I've seen since Nia da Costa's Candyman last year. There's a lot of turns here that I didn't expect, but also above all the thrills and scares, there's a lot of heart in this movie. And that's honestly what separates this movie from a lot of horror films and thrillers is that it has 
heart at the core of this film there's a message and really scott derrickson is flexing his director's muscle the dude knows how to bring it okay he is so darn good at directing and writing and i do think that this is one of his stronger films and a movie that i feel is rewatchable and scott derrickson knows how to assemble a great crew because the cinematography had me captivated Brad Jokowitz was responsible for the cinematography here on this film and it makes a lot of sense that I love the framing and the different shots because he also worked on episode 4 of Stranger Things, Dear Billy, and Scream 5 which had some incredible shots of Ghostface and everyone else. So. It just makes sense that this film is just as beautiful. And then you have the score, which was incredibly atmospheric. And to nobody's surprise, Mark Corvin, who also worked on The Witch, worked on the score for this movie. I was hearing so many different instruments. I was hearing some bits of music that actually scared me more than what was happening on screen. And I think that's the intention here. So we got some good acting, directing, awesome technical aspects, but what about the rest of the film? And guys, I'm not gonna lie, now that we're getting into the negatives, I looked at this list and well, there's not many. But there are a couple of things that held it back from being great, and let's start with number one, which is the dialogue. At times, I feel like the dialogue was a little bit of a mess. It was kind of rough, not always believable whenever the film tries to incorporate more grounded moments with Gwen, Finney, and their father, but also the momentum is halted by these scenes in the middle of the film. When I do feel like the film is ramping up in intensity, sometimes we get pulled back down to a ground level, and it just didn't really match where I felt like the film should have been going in the trajectory, and sometimes you just get pulled out of certain scenes because of the dialogue, and that's not very always a good thing. And then there are some performances that honestly pale in comparison to the names I listed earlier. Unfortunately, Jeremy Davies is right at the top of that list. I actually like him as an actor, but his role here as Terrence, Finney, and Gwen's father, eh, it doesn't really work for me. It is lackluster and honestly not always convincing, and it's an odd choice to have him speak so darn low so that sometimes, honestly, I think subtitles were needed. I felt myself doing one of these, what did you say? Because I couldn't hear anything, and it was just... Mm. It, it was just kind of pulling me out of certain scenes, and I just wasn't convinced by his character's arc at the end either. Eh. And then you have James Ransone, who I actually don't think delivered a bad performance, but it just came too late in the film. He would have added such a unique dynamic to the story if maybe they introduced him a little bit earlier, but he gets such a little screen time, and honestly, he's kind of sandwiched in there towards the end of the film, and I thought, eh okay, maybe they could have done this earlier and it would have added some more tension. And also, before we get into my overall thoughts, I don't think the editing was always the strongest. There were some decisions, especially in the beginning of the film, to fade out certain scenes or to cut away from certain things very quickly and abruptly, and the editing just felt a little odd and out of place at times, but it wasn't always the worst thing because it did get better as the film went on. So overall, you guys, what do I think of The Black Phone? Well, you know what? It's an effective horror movie and one of my favorite horror movies of the past five years. There's so much tension, it's a tight run time that never drags, which is a huge plus, especially because sometimes horror movies go on a little bit longer than they need to, but this one had a perfect run time. It never felt to me like I was stuck, you know? Yeah, there were some times where the pacing was a little jarring, the editing was out of place, but The Black Phone is a solid movie with some incredible performances. I cannot wait to see the rest of Madeline McGraw and Mason Thames' careers. They are so darn good in this movie. And you of course have Ethan Hawke who just adds the cherry on top. The dude literally is going to give me nightmares. Why Ethan Hawke? No, but honestly, these performances are great. I think the directing and at times the writing was incredibly strong. So while some others have said, yes, the script is not always the greatest and yeah, the dialogue is a little out of place. The Black Phone is a solid horror movie that I definitely recommend you see in theaters because to be trapped in that environment per se, yeah, it's effective. So if I had to rate the black phone, I'd give it a solid four out of five. It works for me. It had me covering my eyes at certain scenes and man, it is just so darn good. So there you have it, you guys. That's my real review of the black phone. But let me know what you think when you see it down below in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Are you kind of in the middle? And let me know which performance was your favorite. And hey, if you haven't already, hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel and tap on that bell and hit the thumbs up button because we got so much content coming. We just got done talking about the umbrella academy season three so i got my reactions and reviews up for that and hey we gotta talk about elvis we gotta talk about thor next week my goodness i cannot wait for the rest of this month Alrighty, y'all again thanks so much for watching and i'll catch you at the next screening and um seriously black balloons now nah, i'm popping them i'm popping all the black balloons